for our next news special report. In today's special report, we're delving into a chilling warning from Congressman Matt Gates. Picture this, a major media outlet, the Washington Post, launching what Gates calls a veiled green light for something unspeakable against former President Donald Trump. Gates is warning, they're obviously greenlighting assassination. This isn't just a casual remark, it's a dire alert about the dangerous path our media is treading. As we unravel the story, you'll see just how far some are willing to go in their opposition to Trump. Are these just words, or is there a deeper, more sinister intent behind them? This report is not just about political disagreements, it's about the safety and stability of our republic. So stay with us. You don't want to miss the insights we've uncovered, leading to a final thought that every American needs to hear. Now, folks, before we dive deeper into our report, let's take a moment. The kind of groundbreaking news we bring to you wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. It's like this. In Washington, D.C., elites are profiting big time, akin to the rich men north of Richmond. They're making fortunes from defense stocks and timely trades, just as Congressman Blumenauer, Pelosi, and Burr have done. But now Ross Gibbons, a former Wall Street VP, is turning the tables. He's left a high life to help you profit from inside information the same way that the elites do. With Ross's guidance, you could see significant returns, so don't be left out. Visit yourinsideredge.com, get your free guide on big trade secrets, and start your journey to financial empowerment. That's yourinsideredge.com, your key to trading success. Now, in a world where media narratives be, often become the battleground for political wars, we're witnessing a concerning trend. The Washington Post, a publication with considerable influence, recently published a piece that could be interpreted as nothing short of alarming. The article, penned by Robert Kagan, husband and former State Department of, husband of former State Department official Victoria Newland, warned of an impending Trump dictatorship. And this is where our story begins. The narrative being spun here is not just another critique or political disagreement. The implications are far more severe. The Washington Post boldly states that, quote, there is a clear path to dictatorship in the United States and it's getting stronger, I'm sorry, shorter every day. Such language is not hyperbol hyperbolic, but dangerously close to incitement. It's a call to action against a perceived threat, but the way it's framed could be interpreted as legitimizing extreme measures. And this is where Congressman Matt Gates' response becomes pivotal. Gates, with a direct and unfiltered approach, accuses the media of greenlighting assassination. This isn't a statement made lightly. When a public figure like Gates makes such a claim, it's imperative we delve deeper into the meetings and implications. Now, Gates' tweet is a stark reminder of the gravity of the situation, the implication that a news outlet could be seen as endorsing the ultimate act of violence against a political figure is chilling. This is not just about Trump. It's about the precedent that such rhetoric sets. Let's not forget the media plays a crucial role in shaping public opinion and discourse. When outlets like the Washington Post, the Atlantic, and the New York Times publish pieces warning of a Trump dictatorship, it's more than just editorializing. It's shaping a narrative that could have real-world consequences. And the portrayal of Trump as a dictator, of course, isn't new. It's a continuation of a trend we've seen since his first term. The Atlantic and the New York Times have echoed similar sentiments. This chorus of accusations isn't just a critique of policies or leadership style. It's a deliberate framing of Trump as an existential threat to democracy. And Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, he weighs in on this, urging everyone to take a step back. His tweet encapsulates the growing concern over the hyperbolic and potentially dangerous rhetoric being used. All these articles calling Trump a dictator are about one thing legitimizing illegal and violent conduct as we get closer to the election, everyone needs to take a chill pill. <clears throat> now, Vance's call for moderation is a reminder that while political discourse is necessary, there is a line that should not be crossed. Labeling someone a dictator in a leading national newspaper isn't just an opinion. It's a potential incendiary act. Senior Trump advisor Jason Miller draws parallels with the situation in 2016. The strategy, as Miller points out, seems to be a shift from debating issues to name-calling and fear-mongering. This isn't just about differing political views. It's about how the media is choosing to frame those views. The Trump campaign's response to these allegations is equally telling. Spokesperson Stephen Chung dismisses the claims as another version of the media's failed Russia collusion narrative. This isn't just a denial. 
It's an accusation of the media perpetuating falsehoods for political ends. Representative Matt, uh, Mike Walls of Florida and Wesley Hunt of Texas also chimed in, highlighting the hysterical scare tactics reminiscent of 2016 and 2020 elections. Their statements underscore the belief that these narratives are part of a larger strategy to influence public opinion against Trump. The contrast in viewpoints is stark when you consider the comments of Trump's detractors, like Representative Jamie Raskin of Maryland. Raskin's prediction of a Trump presidency resembling Viktor Orban's Hungary paints a dire picture of a future under Trump's leadership. In the midst of all this, Liz Cheney's remarks add another layer to the narrative. Cheney's suggestion of potentially running as a third-party candidate to disrupt Trump's momentum speaks volumes about the current state of the Republican Party. It's a sign of the deep divisions within the party and the lengths that some are willing to go to prevent a second Trump term. As we parse through these narratives, it's essential to remember the role of the media in shaping them. The Washington Post article and similar pieces in other publications aren't just opinions. They're part of a larger conversation that has the power to influence public perception and potentially action. This isn't just about Trump or the upcoming election. It's about the integrity of our media and the role it plays in our republic. The media's portrayal of political figures and events doesn't just inform public opinion. It shapes it. It's crucial, then, to approach such narratives with a critical eye. The portrayal of Trump as a potential dictator isn't just a critique of his politics or leadership style. It's a framing that carries significant weight and consequences. It's a narrative that, if left unchecked, could lead to unintended and potentially dangerous outcomes. As we conclude this report, let's remember the importance of balanced and responsible journalism. It's not just about reporting the news. It's about understanding the impact of how it's reported. The responsibility of the media is not just to inform, but to do so in a way that upholds the principles of fairness and integrity. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. It's not just a call to action. It's an invitation to be part of a community that values truth, integrity, and balanced reporting. In a world of sensationalized news and polarized opinion, it's more important than ever to stay informed and engaged. As we wrap up this report, let's reflect on the gravity of Congressman Matt Gates' warning and the broader implications it has for our republic. The claim that a major media outlet could be indirectly endorsing harm against a former president is not just a matter of political rhetoric. It's a serious accusation that strikes at the very heart of our democratic principles. In a republic like ours, where the rule of law and freedom of speech are foundational, the role of the media is not to incite, but to inform. When the lines between reporting and inflaming are blurred, we risk entering dangerous territory. The story isn't just about Trump or the Washington Post. It's a wake-up call to all Americans about the power of words and the responsibility that comes with them. As we navigate these turbulent political waters, let us remember the importance of discernment, responsibility, and the unwavering commitment to the principles that make our nation great. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.